Okay. Now, all I did was I wiped the debris off from around here with a little bit of uh, brake cleaner and a paper towel. Not very thorough, but uh, I got the job done. So now I'm taking two of my screws. This morning I went to Radio Shack when they opened at 9 and got some of these 4 um, and 40 round head machine screws. So it's a 42 pack. Here's the number if you wanted to get the same one. It has plenty in there. I bought two of these uh, because who knows how many I'll end up using in the future. And uh, I hate going to the store to get something this small for a project. So if I do it again, I wanna have what I need. And they're $2.49 per pack. So pretty reasonable. Um, so I've got my screws here. And I hopefully have success here. If I don't, I'll probably delete this clip and make it look like I did it right the first time. Just kidding. So I'm going to start them by hand, make sure they do go in, and they are twisting in by hand. So I've got them started in there just a little bit, enough, uh, maybe about a quarter inch or so. And that's plenty. I'm going to have to shim this out. And you can see here, I've got a quarter 20 screw just sticking out of the uh, hole that was already in the milling machine. And I don't know if that was a hole that was uh, made by somebody else or the factory. It doesn't seem to have a purpose. If I were to guess, I would say that's a gib screw adjustment, but there's no gib screw in there. So I just put a screw in there. Um, about an eighth of an inch or so and I put a riv nut on there to give me something round for my limit switch to hit with the uh, roller there so I don't want it stripping out or having too much resistance so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my power supply on and jog this over and try to give you a, a shot of this thing in action I have to lower the camera a little because my stepper motor is gonna take its head off and I obviously don't hold any degrees in photography so bear with me here okay got that thing set and obviously it's not going to stop on its own, so I'm going to have to just stop jogging it when it gets there. But hopefully you can hear the click. Dang. And I actually <laughs> have it off. I thought I had it right on the money to where I need it. So I'm going to have to make an adjustment. But I don't mind showing you guys that because you can learn from my mistakes. Um, from here, what I'm probably just going to do is adjust the arm on the limit switch. And when I say adjust it, I mean bend it slightly. And you know what? I'm probably going to attempt that in front of you guys just to show you where I'm coming from here. To make a small adjustment like this would be too easy. I'm just going to take it, give it a little manipulation with some pliers. Now we'll try it again, see if we can get it to click before we uh, bottom out the machine. Good. And click. So we've got it to click now. And uh, I'm going to test and see how much space we have, like clearance. So quite a bit. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't clicking like right at the last second to where there's a chance it can mechanically uh, stop before it hit the limit switch so uh, you can get real close with the switches and then make a small adjustment on the arm if you need and that's how I'm gonna rock this thing should be just fine now I want to give you a, a different perspective on how that thing is lining up okay so that's the rivnut and the roller on the limit switch there. And you heard a click. That 
that's it. So what I'm gonna do to hold that thing out, I had the idea of maybe trying some little nuts. I'll show you what pack I bought. You can probably guess um, what size I went with. Four um, by 40 steel machine hex nuts. So I'm gonna just put those things on the screw and shim out the limit switch with these. I think that's a pretty slick idea. It'll be real quick and easy. So that's that.